Make sure you watch to the end of the video to see how to win this episode special merch pack. How is it looking? Am I okay? <laughs> oh, you gave me a courtesy laugh. That means you, <laughs> I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> football is a mud. Two words that together have no correlation to the average person. But to the seasoned football equipment manager, they go together like peanut butter and jelly. And in this episode, we're at the University of Houston to see how they use mud to break in their footballs for pro day. I'm Leland, and welcome to Sports Dissected, the series. All right, guys, so I'm here with Mr. Uh, Evan Tucker, UH Football. You're going to be showing us how to take this retail ball, retail filling ball, and turn it into game ready, right? Brand new and broken in. Now, what is this process called? You can call it a lot of things. We just call it breaking in the ball. Uh, some guys call it mudding it. It's whatever you want to call it, but it's 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 a bunch of steps to get it ready for a quarterback to throw. If you gave a quarterback that, he's not going to want to throw it. This is this is kind of the, the standard that we want to set ourselves to. So. so right off the bat, the first thing I'm noticing is obviously the color. The color is probably the best indicator for, for breaking in a ball. The darker the leather, the more broken in it's going to be. Uh, you can even just tell on a feel. I mean, this is softer. This is There's a lot of things that have obviously gone into it, but it's it's softer. It's easier to grip. It's more uh, it's more tacky. It's, it's just better overall to throw than something straight out of the box that doesn't have any grip to it yet. So just to confirm, these are both the same age football. Neither of those balls have been thrown by a quarterback yet. How many steps are we going to go through today? About eight or nine steps to get this ball turned into this ball. Each ball takes about two or three days to get ready. So first step, we're going to take it over here to this ball brush machine. Uh, I don't use this a lot for balls, but this is kind of like a good, uh, good first step. Uh, you don't need too much technique for this, really. You just got to take off a little bit of this base layer of film, kind of bring some of the the dimples out of the ball, you can already see just a little bit. The color is already starting to change once you get the bristles on there. Now, can you tell when you, when you pull a ball out of the box what's going to be a good ball and what's not really going to be a good ball? Yeah, I mean, NFL balls especially, they're, they've got a good a good girth to them. Guys like, especially receivers, they like this the wider ball. So there's some balls that are a little bit on the dud end that will we'll kind of save as maybe giveaway balls. But you want to hop in and give it a try? You can go as, as hard or as soft as you want. You just really, you want that color to start changing. You want that layer of film to kind of get off there a little bit, just like that. Okay. Who determines how mudded the ball is or how broken the ball should be? Who do you talk to? So the starting quarterback, he's the first guy to talk to about anything football related. Sometimes the offensive coordinator will like to get involved, but uh, it's mostly the starting quarterback and he'll, he'll kind of have his own set of specs that he wants balls. Step one, complete. Step one's good. A nice little sheen on it. Yep, yep, we're getting okay. there. So the second step is gonna be, we're gonna take some shaving cream to it. Uh, so it's a little bit of a weird step. Shaving cream kind of helps as a little bit of a conditioner for the leather, but it helps bring out some of that red dye that you see in this ball. So this, this ball, NFL balls are more red than brown. Uh, so this will help bring out some of that dye, help soften up the leather a little bit. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna sit, you're just gonna take a nice little strip, go kind of down okay. each side, work it in, massage it up. All right. Do different teams kind of have different techniques to, to breaking in balls? Everybody's going to have a little bit of their own kind of way to do things. Most of the steps are more or less the same, but there's going to be subtle differences. There's a lot of different things you can do, and everybody kind of learns their own process when they're a student or they're young in the profession. The most important step is probably the mud at the end, especially for an NFL ball to get it looking like that. The biggest step, though, is going to be the leather conditioner that you put on and letting it sit overnight and the heat. It kind of tans the leather almost a little bit. So how, how are we looking? I see it's turning pink. You're looking pretty good, yep. So that's that dye coming out of the ball. We'll let that sit for maybe five minutes or so. We'll take it back over the ball brush. We'll brush that shaving cream off and then we can go on to step three. All right, so we're nice and conditioned. Yep, so we got the shaving cream on there. We let it sit for a little bit. Just brush it off kind of like we did before. You can kind of notice too, again, that the color's getting darker. The leather's gonna feel a little bit softer. Man, you're a nephew. You knocked at this ball in like <laughs> two minutes, dude. <laughs> there we go. We're all ready for step three. All right, so this is leather conditioner. Leather conditioner. So we're gonna put just a little bit up top on each panel and you're gonna work it in kind of like you did with the uh, with the shaving cream. Okay. Try to avoid getting it on the laces though. So the, the laces are a little sensitive to, to this. So you can see when you rub this in again, some more of that red dye is really gonna come out, especially when you start working that in. I'm glad I have the gloves. Yep, yep. <laughs> your, your hands will turn uh, bright pink if you don't have gloves on when you're doing this. 
So how did you kind of learn the secrets of this process? A lot of it is trial and error, but a lot of it's also talking with other guys in the profession. I interned with two NFL teams in college, and I, I learned a little bit about that while I was there, and obviously doing it as a student manager in college. And, and again, after I graduated, you know, I've, I've kind of got a lot of a lot of experience from a lot of different places, seeing how they've done it, kind of with the different ingredients that some guys use and different steps and processes that they all use. And equipment guys are pretty great in the profession. You know, we're all pretty willing to share what works for us, what doesn't work, uh, you know, best practices and everything to, to get the players, you know, the best possible product they can have. And that's that's our job at the end of the day. I think it's coming along nicely. Yep, yep. Really, once that dye starts coming out, you know, that's, that's how you know it's done. So after this step, usually we'll let it sit for about 40 minutes to an hour, let it kind of soak into that leather, and then we'll we'll hit it with a heat gun for step five. We got leather conditioner that's been sitting on here for about 30, 40 minutes. We're gonna take this heat gun, kind of accelerate the drying process of that a little bit. We're gonna help soak up that leather conditioner into the leather, kind of help bring that leather to life a little bit. Look, we're a few steps in and I'm just, I can feel like a turnover and we lose this ball. It's like, bro, I'm not, You get attached to it. I'm going to get that back. <laughs> you mentioned earlier that typically you guys get in about 200 or so balls, right? How long does the process take to, to get all of them conditioned and ready? So we'll start out doing, you know, maybe 80 or so for the season and kind of break them in as needed. Rain practices are equipment guys' worst nightmares. Rain really, really screws up the football situation. Uh, we'll get big giant fans blowing on them after practice to try to get them dried out. But sometimes you're probably gonna lose, you know, four or five balls, a, a rain practice or a rain game. So uh, you just kind of always have to have some ready to go for, for when they go down. So when you're watching a, a game on, the, on TV now, do you like instantly look and see like, oh, that ball's been worked in pretty good? Yeah, we don't always get to watch a lot of games, but when we do get a chance to, uh, you know, you kind of don't get to watch it the same way you did before you started working here, so. All right, I don't know if this is done yet, but I'm starting to get hot. We're gonna call it done. All right, so now we're at the, this is the mudding stage, right? This is the stage that's gonna get this ball nice and dark. The important stage to, to get it really that texture finalized. So uh, we're gonna use some mud that is often used on baseballs with the MLB. So kind of just take a little bit of this and you're just gonna spread it right over top of this ball. This ball's been sitting overnight. Get it nice and worked in so that you don't see any more of that red leather anymore. And you can go right over that NFL logo. It'll stay perfectly fine afterwards. So kind of work it into the, the seams and everything. So is this actual mud? The baseball specific mud comes from a certain place on a certain river that uh, has natural minerals and uh, other things in it to really help footballs and other athletic balls kind of bring out their, their full potential. So, you know, if you went in your backyard and used just regular mud, um, it'll kind of do something similar, but it won't be the same as, as this. So uh, this is kind of a equipment guy's best friend for getting footballs broken in. So you can try this at home, <laughs> just let me not get the same result. Yeah, I mean, it, it might not be NFL ready, but uh, it, it'll do a decent job. Once you finish getting all that red colored in, probably let it sit. 18 to 24 hours overnight. It'll dry out. It'll really bring the texture out on the ball. And then we can take it off and, and finish her up. So this ball has been sitting overnight for about 24 hours. So you're just gonna take a damp rag and you're gonna start working some of that mud off. You can kind of see that leather uh, change colors overnight. A lot darker than it was to start. Gotta put some elbow grease in this. <laughs> <laughs> so to get it super dark, is it a technique for you to, to re-mud it and like do the process over again? Yeah, so um, the color is important, but it's not the only thing, you know, it's the quality of the ball. So if you want it dark, dark, like almost black, you can mud it again. You can do some more conditioner on it. You can do some more things to it. Uh, I know some people put them in the, in the dryer to tumble on the dryer. There's different ways to do it. Usually this is kind of, you have to do this a couple times. So once you get to right around here, take a brush and you can start kind of working in some of this to, to bring out some of that color. You can kind of see already, it makes it darker. The ball's gonna be wet right away. I like to use a hand brush instead of the machine at this part to really get some of that fine dirt out of the crevices and around out of the dimples of the ball. You try that, that'll give you a workout too after you do it for a while. Really brings that color out, it looks really nice. All right, so we're at the second so, to last stage, right? So this is basically the final step. So this is the, the finished product right here. This is after uh, the mud's been pretty much wiped clean of, uh, of a mudded ball. You can see it's pretty close to this color, but the last step is really just uh, giving it some love with this brush. Uh, you know, this kind of takes anywhere from 20, 30 minutes to an hour to get it uh, nice and dark and, and game ready. It's certainly a labor of love. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, we do kind of as something to do uh, throughout the day. Maybe you take a break from it, you come back 20 minutes later when your arm gets tired. 
I'm gonna go ahead and give uh, the Houston opponents a PSA. Defenses, before you start trying to pick off any balls, think about my guy. Think about the label of love that we put into this ball. Or if you, if you take it, get it back, you know, just send it back, you know? We're just trying to give our guys the best possible stuff for them to, to not worry about anything else but playing the game and, and going out there and, and beating whoever we're playing. Or in this case, look good for the scouts for pro day. It's always something. I'm trying to give somebody a contract. There's going to be some scouts here next week if you, if you want to stick around. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. We've been working on this ball for a minute. I said the last step was the second to final stage because we got to test it out, right? Got to got to give it a pass. Let's go do it. Let's go do it. All right. We're here at the stadium. Give her a toss. Let's give her a toss. Yeah. Blue 42, Sparks the second, set, hit, hit. Well, Evan, who knew it was so many steps into making this? Go to this. Absolutely. I mean, it's a labor of love, like I said, but you know, it's it's worth it to see the final product compared to the brand new out of the box one and whatever we gotta do for the players to help us win on game day. Well guys, you saw the process, you saw our work. And as I always say, I'm sorry, you'll never see it the same. I'm Leland and this is Sports Dissected. Hey, you know what time it is. Make sure you head over to our Instagram page at Sports Dissected to find out how to win this merch pack. It'll be going soon, so you better go quick. When it comes to locker rooms, it's only two types of people. There's everyone else, and then there's Shield Locker. Since 2014, Shield's number one priority has been to disrupt all industry standards by blurring the line between traditional function and modern masterpiece. With their use of non-traditional materials such as solid surface, they're able to set their clients' imagination free. The Brooklyn Nets and Kansas Jayhawks trusted them, and you should too. Visit shieldlockers.com to unlock your dreams. But beware, because this isn't your father's locker room.